In this three-part series, we're going to take a look at lighthouses, how they work, some of their history, and how a modern-day lighthouse works. There's going to be three videos in this series, and I suggest that you watch all three of them. It'll be worth it. I promise. Hi, my name is Spence, and I'm a modern-day lighthouse keeper. I put together this comprehensive guide of exactly how a lighthouse works and it will take a really good look at exactly how a modern day lighthouse works compared to how it used to work. This video series is set into three different segments. We'll take a look at first the math, then we'll take a look at the history, and then we'll take a look at exactly what a modern day lighthouse is like and what automation means for a modern day lighthouse keeper. So let's get the basics of how a lighthouse works out of the way. There's a tower, on the top there's a light, and that light tells mariners different things like, go this way, you're going the right way, or whoa, back off, danger, you're gonna die. Generally lighthouses point out two very important things. They'll point out ports, or very important points of interest, or they'll point out dangers telling you that you need to go another way. Let's take a look at the station I am currently at, Entrance Island. Entrance is located in front of Nanaimo, which is on the east coast of Vancouver Island in the Strait of Georgia. The east side of Vancouver Island is littered with islands, all of them with small channels of water between them that is both dangerous and hard to navigate. As a boat travels northwest up the Strait of Georgia, it will eventually come across Entrance Island Lighthouse, making out the port for Nanaimo and showing the safe way into the harbor. So this shows us the why there's a need for a lighthouse in this particular spot, but what about how it works? So for a lighthouse to work, you need to be able to see it. And that's part of the reason why a lighthouse is so tall. But why are some lighthouses tall and others are not? Well, it all has to do with the curvature of the Earth. Lighthouses use a concentrated beam of light that it sends out to mark its location, and light, as we have found over time, kind of works in line of sight. So essentially, you need to be able to see the light to see the light. So to get complicated here, there is a formula for being able to calculate the line of sight for the horizon. That formula is Take the square root of height divided by a number which represents the curve of the Earth, and that equals the distance to the horizon that an object can be seen. To make that practical, let's take a look again at entrance. Entrance's tower is 19 meters from the water. If we plug that into our formula, you take the square root of 1,900 centimeters divided by 6.752, and you get about 16 kilometers. So that would mean that the light would travel 16 kilometers before it hits the horizon and you're unable to see it any further from there if your eyes were right at water level. So we're not quite done yet. There is a part two to this formula. Part two of this formula would be the distance that the receiver of the light can see to the horizon. So let's say you're on a boat and your eyes are about 10 meters from the water. So at 10 meters, you would plug that into your formula, you would get an additional 12 kilometers. So that would mean that you have the 16 kilometers from the lighthouse and 12 kilometers from the boat to the horizon for a distance of 28 kilometers that you would first be able to see this light. Now all these distances are weather permitting of course. For different weather conditions the light may be a little more difficult to see and you may not get the full range but essentially this formula works if the weather is good and there is nothing inhibiting the length of distance that the light will travel. So let's take a look again at entrance and its maximum distances that you'd be able to see it if you were traveling towards the island. In this image, you can see the distance where you would first see the light if you were taking a ferry from Tuasin to Nanaimo. And then in this image, 
you can see the distance that you would be able to first see the light if you were taking the ferry from West Vancouver to Nanaimo. Both of these examples are taking into consideration that you're standing maybe 10 meters from the water on the deck of the boat, but I think you get the idea. Great, so we can see the light. How does that help people on the water know where they are? Well, each lighthouse has a unique set of flashes that a mariner can check their maps, they can check in books, and they can use online to tell them exactly which lighthouse or which buoy they happen to be seeing with which flashes of light. Maybe there will be four quick flashes and a five second blank, or maybe it will be a constant flash with a three second space between each flash, or maybe it'll even be colored flashes of a red flash, then a white flash, and a red flash, then a white flash. There are infinite number of combinations, and each lighthouse is unique and specific, so that when a mariner is seeing these flashes, they know exactly whereabouts they are. For Entrance Island, their code is a single flash every five seconds. So if you're seeing a single flash for every five seconds, then you know that the light that you're looking at is the Entrance Island Lighthouse. So that's pretty much the uh, basics of exactly how a lighthouse works, the concept behind it. Now, what we'll do is we'll take a look at the next two videos. You can check out the history of lighthouses here, and you can check out how a modern day lighthouse works down here. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.